Angel Droids, you have the next round. Okay, great. We're live. Welcome to the oh, great. <laughs> Welcome to the Lovecraft Easing Podcast. Hey Mark. Hey Good Lady to see you. Germs. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How are you? So far so good. All right. Hadn't hadn't been here long though, so we'll soon see. <laughs> <laughs> what you have to deal with? Can everybody hear us and see us okay? I don't know if that's a good thing. That it's probably not, but still they signed up for it. You know. They knew what they were getting. They bought their tickets. That's right. They made their beds. You know, they I made their deal with the bad. devil to watch this show. So So, you know, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'll throw a fit. Something like I'll that. throw a fit because it's fun. Ah, damn it, Carpenter's here. <laughs> is he? He's, is he in his car? He's no, in, he's not. Oh, come in the car. on. Oh, what, hey. Well, Bridget and Mike are driving back from the Keys home. The they might show it's up. It's not on the, the same. Road. No. Matt, you got to get mobile, dude. Doctors and cars. That's why we do this show. Doctors yeah. and cars. So, hey, Matt. Disturbing pattern. I'm in Carroll, Iowa. Ah, oh, congratulations! Fine. Fine you're in Iowa. Map. Hey, your day's got to be going great. You're in Iowa, man. That's where I'm from. You know what? You know what I see? Something that begins with the letter C. What? Corn. Oh yeah. I also see that Iowa just lost the game to South Carolina. Iowa Hawkeyes. Uh, that was a big deal. Carolyn Clark, whatever her name was, Caitlin Clark. Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they got this this girl that's six foot seven on the other team guarding her. I mean, there's only so much you can do. So, anyway. Well, she, she, if she was a man, she could cheat like hell. I don't understand that, and uh, I'll move on. Um. <laughs> You ever seen what goes on under the basket in a real basketball game? It's like a riot, practically. Uh, if I was not involved, no, then I, I haven't. But so, uh, but yeah. And welcome back to the Lovecraft Easy and Sports Recap. Right. This is it probably in this is in all these years. This is the first time I have mentioned anything about sports. I think so. Danielle was screaming at the TV. <laughs> screaming at the TV and a little bit ago. Yeah. So anyway, that's not what the people signed up for, so maybe we'll, we'll move on. No, and actually they're, they're, they'll they're be happy to know with seven games left, Arsenal is ahead on goal difference in the Premier League. What language are you speaking? Um, is, I believe, uh, yeah. Uh, what they call football. Foot, football. Foot. Sporting. Football. Yeah. yeah. Uh, welcome to the Lovecraft Easing Podcast. Uh, where we talk about cosmic horror, weird fiction, all kinds of fiction, and apparently, occasionally, sports. So, Matt, you're in Carroll, Iowa, so you get to introduce yourself first. Um, I am Matt Carpenter. I'm afraid because I'm not at home, I can't run to my basement and look what I have, so I don't have a prize to offer today. So, sorry. We'll That's get back right. on that the next time I can make That's a list right. of what I have to play. That's okay. Okay. Um, I am running Lovecraft Easing movie night. Uh, we saw John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness last night. And because of my weird travel schedule that people may have alluded to, next week, this Maybe. coming week, it's going to be on Wednesday, not Saturday. So pay attention to the announcements and uh, look on Facebook and vote for the picture you want to see. Yeah, go to um, Facebook and join the Lovecraft Easing community group, which is different from the lovecraft easing podcast page so you buried the lead how was i i mean i know how it is but how did you you, you know the, how old are you 70 80 and you haven't seen prince of darkness before last night it's a matter of isabel really doesn't like scary movies so it's like most of the scary movies i've seen like the last 10 years have been through the lovecraft easing movie night well i'm i'm glad well, I, I watched like a dozen scary movies this week alone can't you like go into your basement or something and watch a movie on your own or do you get too scared uh, it's just that's so pitiful though 
No, it isn't. I do it all <laughs> Wait the time. Wait a minute. What are you saying about me? Ah, you probably you don't, go, don't go out to eat at restaurants by yourself either. No. Wait, wait, Pete, you don't go to the basement. Like you no, have a I basement don't. in Florida. So go yeah. on. All right. You have daylight that can come through a window. If I waited for Danielle to watch a movie with me, I'd never see anything. Well, maybe uh, Deck Down Under or whatever it's called. And maybe we can spend a little bit of time talking about Godzilla today because I just saw GXK. So did DeBronzo. I, I just saw too. it this afternoon. Oh, my God, you guys. I saw it last the week at the drive-in. Oh, oh, oh nice. Nice. You want to introduce yourself, Mark? Sure. Uh, Stephen Mark Rangy, uh, editor of Death Realm and other things, and writer of Scary Fiction. That's right. You guys really should um, Google, Google him or go to Amazon and type in Stephen Mark Rainey because there's some there are some great stories out there. And holy God, Bridget's iPhone is waiting to enter the room. So, <laughs> not Bridget, but her iPhone, right? Not not yeah. not her specifically. It could be Mister Brenmark. Could be. Yeah, it could be uh, a spy. Yeah. It's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank god <laughs> i can't deal with that guy oh wait he's probably listening in so. <laughs> no he's filling the truck with gas right now oh okay oh. do you have a nice vacation yeah it's been a lot of driving but it's been nice yeah did you get some get some more books listened to oh now i can see everybody no, Mike doesn't like listening to audiobooks, so that's the only sad part. Yes, yes, so what? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how long you're going to be with us, so you can introduce yourself next if you want. Bridget? Oh, are we live? Are we live already? Oh, oh, we're live. <laughs> we are. We are know. live. So, uh, hello, I'm Bridget. I'm eating a bagel, and um. I'm a musician and artist. <laughs> and where are you right now? North Carolina still. Okay. Yeah. Working our way back home. Sounds All like right. a song. Yeah, I was just thinking that too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Working our way back home, baby. Yeah. Right. Way back home <laughs> to you. To you. <laughs> because I'm blue. Pete, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Uh, no, not really. I'm Pete Rollick, right. uh, writer, uh, fisherman, uh, old man. That's true. Mike? Uh, Mike DeBronzo, artist, architect. There you go. Okay. Excitement. Yeah. Uh, Mike Davis. And, uh, I, I, I created this. Little House of Horrors, the Lovecraft Easing, and the podcast and everything. So, um, I believe Pete can't what? stay the whole time and has a book he oh. wants to show everybody. Oh, I I don't have it with me. Um, I have to go get it. I'm sorry. Just go on to somebody else, and I'll go. I'll hobble down My the stairs and get it. God, oh, poor guy. You, you you have to go walk. Oh. I'm trying to market this book for you. You know. Ooh, hobble, hobble. Well, we could talk about this book for a second. Mama Dirt. Oh, yeah. The new Michael Shea novel. Well, new, you know what I mean. He started it in 1986. What? Is that a hardcover, Mike? It is not. It's a paperback um, re an advanced review copy. Huh. The, art uh, the, the artist mm -hmm. is... Um, it, well, Hippocampus Press published it and cover art by Tom Brown cover design by uh, Dan Sauer Dan Sauer I, I asked him how to pronounce his name Dan Sauer Dan Sauer design.com but he also runs Jack and Apes press which is a really nice little press with some with some great books so so yeah what's um, the release date for that you know, I really don't know. I think you can order it already. Yeah, Is I think it you can. Go to Hippocampus and type in 
just type in dirt, but it's spelled with two T's, D-U-R-T-T. And you know, it's spelled with a U too, right? D I said D-U-R-T-T. Uh, dirt, D-E-R-T, dirt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I went on Hippocampus to look for the book too, and it it's $20 and it's it doesn't say pre-order. No, it looks like you can order it now. Yeah, so go hmm. ahead. Hey, uh, for yeah. the live people, if you can see us and hear us, you know, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So anyway, yeah, he started writing this in 86. And it says on the back, he completed this novel as his thesis. But Mama Dirt has lain unpublished ever since. Hippocampus Press is proud to present this novel of cosmic eco-horror from the pen of one of the masters of contemporary weird fiction. Um, and look, if, if you happen to be listening and you're not aware of, of Michael, Michael Shea, just the short version is read everything he's written. Wouldn't you say, guys? Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I got to say, he lived a great deal of his life in San Francisco. And you know how like Lovecraft has his topography yeah. of New England? Well, Michael Shea used San Francisco as his topography. He had jobs like um, a uh, clerk at a kind of cheap hotel. And this was in the uh, early 80s, like right when AIDS was kicking in and uh, San Francisco was in a downswing. And so he was really familiar with like street life, quote unquote, in San Francisco. And it really gives him, uh, when he writes, particularly in that milieu, like a very visceral kind of gritty impact that adds to his, uh, the flavor of what you're reading. Now, what you notice is Mama Dirt is set in a gold camp, a gold mine, which is, of course, the gold rush is how San Francisco was built. So I would view this as this is something within his milieu in terms of like where he's writing because he is very interested in the regional history of the place. Uh, yeah. And like if Stephen you want King in Maine and so forth. One story, but you don't want to read just one story, but you want to read one story. That story would be Fat Face, which may be one of the top Shawgoth stories that was ever written. Yeah. It's been reprinted quite a lot and deservedly so. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, Mama Dirt appears is either a character or is mentioned in a bunch of other stories that were collected in Demiurge. Um, it's just not ringing a bell because I wasn't looking for it. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, I think it's it, from, from that point of view, because we didn't know this novel existed until right. quite recently, you're not looking for that character. This might upend everything. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm still working on the, you know, working out the bugs for the live show, but at least people can see me this episode, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. And uh, I realize we're not totally full screen because when I don't go full screen, when I do go full screen, I can't see all of you, just like two of you. So it's kind of disconcerting, but I'll. Be patient with me, and I'll I'll get it figured out before next week, hopefully. But so, but it's not a big deal. But I just thought I'd mention it. Um, Pete, yeah. Do you did you find the book? I found the book. All right. All right. So here's a little background. If you guys can remember, during the lockdown, I was kind of like every morning I would like telling everybody that what weird dreams I had. And it sort of came, came like a running joke. Um, but then one morning I woke up and I sat down and I had a, I had basically a fully formed, you know, flash fiction in my head from that last night, that dream that night. And I wrote it down and I shared it with these guys and we went back and forth. And the result is this. Mm -hmm. The spontaneous oh, generation. Let me. Hang on just a second. Let me pin you for everybody. There you go. 
Yeah, I, he told me, and I said it should be a children's book. Yeah. Tell so, us about it. Illustrated by Heather, Heather Landry. Heather, uh, illustrated by Heather Landry with layout. You just went silent. With layout. So, there you go, by Kelly Young. Layout by Kelly Young. Right. So, uh, it? what's that? Is it a Strange Eons book? It is not. It is a Lovecraft easy book. No, he was just kind uh, enough to help out. So, with something outside of my experience. So, what is it about? It's um, it's a kid story told from the point of view of a kid who um, is living through what is essentially um, an alien invasion that they don't rec that adults don't recognize as an alien invasion, and it's been going on for years. Um. One morning, all around the world, there's just babies lying on the street and the sidewalk and in the gardens, like Cabbage Patch dolls. And right. they're picked up and they're taken inside and they're taken care of. Um, the elevator pitch for this is Children of the Dam meets Red Dawn. Yeah. But it's honestly, it's very short. It's only, you know, it, it is flash fiction. Um, but I really like it. And it has, I've been shopping around a bunch of people um, in my office and uh, around town since Thursday when I got the draft, this the, the proof. And um, I've got a ton of pre-orders just waiting to for um, us to actually put it on the market. That's great. If you'll remind me on Monday or Tuesday, I'll see if I have a pre-order link yet. Okay. So I don't, is it up on Amazon yet? I don't know. No, no, it's not. But I think I think I can do a pre-order link for people. But the art is just people are thrilled with the art. Yeah, and show them just like a page or something, and let me spotlight you again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, very nice. It turned out really well, and we worked hard on this. And, and you know, it's been we've been working on it for more than three years. Yeah, to get it right because we sh we previewed some of the art at Necronomicon in twenty twenty two. Mark's got titles for, uh, subtitles or something for you: Children of the Red Dawn or Red Dawn of the Damned. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> village of the Red Dawn children. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It all work. It all works out. And like, yeah, it's it's. We've had a lot of fun with it, and um, it is a children's book. If your children are the Manson family, or you know, the Adams, something like that, or the Munsters, or the Munsters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll if you remind me on tomorrow or Tuesday, I'll that'll kick it in my brain to take care of the pre-order link and my proof and Kelly's proof should arrive any day. All right. Yeah. We just need to tweak a few things Yeah, yeah. and then it'll be ready for update. And I'm going to bring copies to Necronomicon. Oh, cool. So, you know, it'll complete its journey. What I've got to do is get you a pre-order link at the moment while I wait for my proof. And I've got a, um, I'm going to ask some people for blurbs, you know, if they yeah, I may just read send you the PDF. money. Hey, Pete, I may just send you the money. You can bring me a signed copy to the convention. But there you go, Pete. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, you know what? This is a great segue because speaking of the Munsters, you know, we just Wait, moved. What? 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 He said speaking it could be the for the children of the Munsters. I, you know, threw that in. Oh, I I don't listen to you, so sorry I missed that. Yeah, it's 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 okay. I've been I've, I'm used to it. Um. So you know, we just moved to a new town uh, about six months ago. This is this is a lot cooler town than the one we left. Almost couldn't fail to be. But I discovered something just the other day. A monster mansion is in this town. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Do you have a photo? Yeah, let me let me do uh let me do a quick share screen and I can show you guys the website. 
Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to do too long with a share screen because uh, people can't uh, see it. See that, though? Yeah. yeah. Monster Mansion. That was cool. Yeah. I've and... seen that you've posted like a few creepy places on uh, on oh, yeah. Facebook, and uh, those are some nice looking creepy places. Well, it sort of inspired me to do a new thing that creative thing that I really enjoy that I didn't ever really think of because the neighborhood we live in is very eclectic, you know, and it's a, it's a great neighborhood, but you know, you can walk six or seven blocks and you know, there, there, there's some creepy looking houses and there's some really kind of Gothic look, looking houses on the same block. But the last one I posted was, Yeah, the creepiest, yeah. And that, that mark, if you were looking at that from that angle and you look to the right, there's a railroad line and an abandoned station right there. So, That's very neat. So, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, a lot of people said it could be a great book cover, so that was that was nice to say. But the Munster Mansion is, I'm reading from the web's, website, is a replica of the house used in the Munsters 1960s sitcom. This reproduction has been painstakingly created room by room. Many pieces in the house are from the show or exact matches, wow, from the show, or exact matches of items from the show. This is a living work as each year more detail is added and more items collected to make this as exact as it can be. Hey, Mike? Yeah. Do they have open houses that you could go to? They... According to this, as long as it's uh, up to date, I sent them a I sent them an uh, email, tell them I hosted a podcast and it would be great to do some video of it. Um, cool. But yes, they you do could do host a podcast there. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, the they, they do have private tours. The cost for the private tour covers up to four guests and is still out of my budget, one hundred and twenty dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. But that's them trying to fund another doorknob or something. Yeah. But it is pretty cool. You know, $120 is a lot of money, but um, that I can't afford. But it's still, they're, they're doing a pretty cool thing. So. Question, question is Does the stairs open up so Spot pops out? Yeah. <laughs> right? There's your 120 bucks. Yeah. But now, see, I, here's what I was thinking was next Halloween, you get like a Red Rider wagon and Logan could sit in it and, you know, have a blanket and say, like, you're pulling your kid around like he's a ghost on Halloween. And then, then maybe you can kind of sneak in. Do you know how old my kid is? Yeah, he's 22 or something. Yeah, That's almost... why you have a wagon, see? And he's so like he's... three inches taller than me. Well, this is why you have him hunched over with a blanket. You're just trying to get oh, okay. in. You're trying to get in there so you can look around and show us everything. I, 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 I think I little, think that'll work. Yeah, think think it's you for go the for it, man. It's like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, you'll be able to tell us. Yeah. Um, got a pen around here somewhere. I want to write that down. There we go. I'll find a pen later. So, May I throw in a creepy house thing real quick? Yeah, please do. Okay, this I don't know if it'll show up. That is a rendering I did like back in 1990 of a. But uh, the light's kind of shining on it, so no, I can I can see it hard, very clearly. Hard wow. to see because it's a it's a repro there. But uh, I did a drawing of this house that my brother and I found out just out in the woods in the county a few miles from here. And uh, I mean, it's probably gone now, probably uh, disintegrated if if it you know if there was anything left of it. But uh, we would go out there and you know sort of hang out and smoke things we really weren't supposed to be smoking <laughs> and uh we one night you know we had we were in altered states so we uh, decided just to go in it and we didn't have any flashlights we had cigarette lighters and uh we found some really cool shit in that house this was uh this was about 1990, as I, I think it was. And we found mail, unopened mail, some opened mail, stuff that went back from to the 50s up through the 60s. Really? And, uh, yeah, so uh, 
there were holes in the floor and then some friends of my brothers decided to have like their the guy's bachelor party inside this house so we we had uh some real adventures there but now this this house is the setting or partial setting for the novel that i'm almost finished writing it's called uh, the house at black tooth pond that's you great know, it that's looks great like title. it would stand to a stand in for the picture in the house like that old kind of run ram it really looks like that would work for a movie of that story that it, it probably would like i said the place is long gone uh, uh -huh. I, I assume because uh, god that was so long ago and it was barely standing at the time i'm surprised none of us fell through the floor mark is it any relation to this house i uh, it could just about be yeah uh, that <laughs> was right i did that illustration for who was it was it margaret frasley i think had a story um in that issue and that was i believe that's what that was based on okay where evil waits yeah evil okay yeah yeah that was it now the really important question is what exactly did you smoke you know some of some of that dried green stuff that well the statue right. we Aaron, Aaron. Smoking pot man yeah. the uh the uh the statute of limitations i'm sure is is long yeah. past on that and, and possibly some other things i'm sure if you smoke marinara i don't want anything to do with you <laughs> no only mozzarella he didn't inhale it's not a problem yeah uh so someone in the live chat asks where can you get the spontaneous generation book at by pete Rollick. Uh, if you just joined us, I'll have a pre-order link, I believe, up this week. So, how can I... Uh, I we'll post that in the Lovecraft Easing group. You know, Facebook Lovecraft okay. Easing community. People can go there. I also paste it on our profile, Facebook profiles so that people can share it. Going to be okay there, Pete? Yeah. I'm taking off the, the patch that's keeping me alive. Um, I threw my back out, so I'm hooked up on some topical patches. Okay, what well, tell us which one it is. Well, it's salon pass. Really? Uh, don't don't inhale those patches. Now. No. Jimmy Christmas. You could oh. try grinding them up and putting them in a joint. Oh, really? Yeah, give it a go. What could happen? Yeah. You could die. That's what you well, could do. You could we die. wouldn't because we're not doing it, but it'd be cautionary for everybody else. You know, science yeah. science has risks, Matt. I, you're right. It does. Yeah. Uh, you People like your afro, by the way. Pete. You like this? Yeah. I don't I don't know which which my wife hates more, the, the hair up here or like my attempt to imitate um, Frank Belknap Long. <laughs> it's so, a party we, all over can we talk about godzilla sure why you know we what could. why don't we i have an yeah, idea let's talk about my... godzilla thanks pete. Care, pete. Bye. see you buddy bye pete bridget, bye, pete. Have you seen, bridget's still have you seen here godzilla yet? have i seen what the new godzilla movie yet yeah mike and i actually just watched it yesterday the godzilla oh, versus cool. kong right well the godzilla times kong yeah oh okay all right Yes, it was awesome. I enjoyed it. It was fun. There well, was some silliness, but I don't care. It was fun. How does it compare to a minus one? It doesn't compare. Not, There's no, it's no, like, no. why even put it in the same discussion? Oh, you liked it then, Matt. Okay. Kelly sent me a picture that had Godzilla minus one with Flay Mignon underneath it. And then a new Godzilla flick we're talking about with a tasty cheeseburger under it. I think that kind of does it nicely. So, Matt, aren't you the one that said let's talk about Godzilla? Yeah, yeah. I, well, the thing is, it, everybody likes Godzilla pretty much. There, most people like the monster character of Godzilla. And my issue with these monarch movies is they spend so much money on so much CGI. I mean, obviously, they worked really hard to make the CGI spectacular. And then it's in the service of a a laughable script, you know. So like, sure, it is gorgeously made, and uh, in particular, 
Mothra looks gorgeous. Yes. yes. Um, but the story, oh my lord. <laughs> so it's like someone took the writer into a room yeah. and beat him with a stupid yeah. stick. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta realize though that you you know, remember I, that one. I can see it now. A whole bunch of young people are like, "How can you expect a good story when you go to see a giant monster movie?" And I will have a lot of issues to take with such such claptrap. But that's just it. It seems like they're gearing it toward people who really don't give a flip about the story. Although I will say, this one held up better than the the preceding ones gosh yes um absolutely so i i I did enjoy watching it i really mostly liked the monarch uh tv series i I mean it was it was it actually had writing to it you know not always great but it but it had writing and i appreciated that so bridget's mini review is it's silly but fun and Mm -hmm. and your guys review your review well, is so, different. So, okay. I... So now we know Kong has a little boy now. And he's obviously some of those gorillas That's have sweet. to be females. So he's going to get a Mrs. Kong. Well, what about poor Godzilla? It, I mean, is he just going to be like a Mothra fucker or what? He's, I mean, a, he's a lone wolf. He's a lone wolf. I thought he was going to hook up with, I don't want to give away spoilers. Are we doing spoilers here? Yeah, sure. I don't, I'm never going to see. You thought he was going to hook up with Tiamat? No, what what's the the other one? No, I couldn't the, remember the name. Yeah, the other uh, the other kaiju. They, the yeah, cool they specifically. Kaiju. The cool there kaiju. you go. <laughs> specifically say it's female. I'm like, that's what's gonna happen. A little date at the Coliseum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> love is in the. Everybody's happy. Like I actually, it's a, it's a bubblegum movie. Yeah, like, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it, it's a good drive-in movie. I mean, yeah, the exactly. fact that the Coliseum is Godzilla size and it's like, if I fit, I sit, is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's just like there's so much real estate damage in this movie. Yeah. Like, I, I thought Godzilla was cute in the Coliseum. <laughs> I get it. I have a question. Uh, what did you guys think of his jacked up small waist on the juice look when he evolves? Maybe he's been working or... out. I I so much like the monstrous appearance of him in the Toho Studio version. Yeah. It's just, it's not that it's, it, he's Godzilla. That's it. it, 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 it I do, I was not moved or, or uh, I was not impressed or distressed by his design. He looked like Godzilla. Okay. You know, I like this one a lot better than where you've got this monstrously oversized bell-shaped body and a little teeny weeny head i just thought that looked ridiculous so they did a a much better uh proportion uh in this movie it's 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 that they so much so much detail on the cgi that's like yeah. the colors it was very vivid so that to me was like very impressive how they did that but what it was in service of it's like oh, yeah well, now I've been I've been getting see now I this this is my most re- recent acquisition it's the 19 it's from Godzilla versus Gigan is how it sold but it's basically the destroy all monsters suit from 1968 and this is a pretty sharp little guy oh yeah so yeah he looks good that that's uh, that's that's Godzilla man that that's Godzilla I will say this about the new one like Mark I agree with you the last one we actually watched it uh Friday and when we saw it in the theater, just like the whole trio of Bobby Millie, whatever her, own, her name is, Brown, and the Bleach guy. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard. Like, yes. it just drove me nuts. It just I felt dumber by the end of the movie. Like, the monster fights were great. It just yeah. everything else was just atrocious. This movie, it helps that a lot of the characters you uh, we wind up meeting are telepathic and don't speak. Yeah, it helps like a lot. A, <laughs> My wife that and is, I com- commented on what? that. Yeah, I'm like, that's the perfect solution. But um, telepathy. But, yeah, they don't have the dialogue, yeah. the sign language, and just you know, a lot of quiet. Boy, that's a lot better than when they yak. Boy, you're really talking about out of this. They even made the conspiracy guy not fucking annoying. He was or actually not, fun. I actually yeah. enjoyed him this time. I d- I didn't want to smack him down like in the, the previous movie. Oh, in fact, yeah. I have. 
after seeing the, the first Godzilla versus Kong there the first time, I've tried to watch it two or three times since, and I can't get past the first 30 minutes of it. I just have to turn it off. Yeah, well, see, it's, it's that rough. guy actually, he's got some acting chops. You know, he played Lemon in Bullet Train. You know, yeah. and uh, they got oh, the, shit, guy, yeah. the guy who was like the first pilot on that subterranean Earth. He, he was in Chernobyl. He was like in episode three of Chernobyl. He was the minor. Uh, so they they got some good acting talent, but it was completely unnecessary. But their paychecks well, were probably more... nice. Yeah, I mean Dan Stevens and uh, oh God Lauren Hall, I think her name is. She's always I've never seen a movie where she's like bad. Oh, so, but guy, it helps. Who played the guy who played the quote dentist veterinarian. He Dan was uh, Matthew Crawley from Downton Abbey. Do you, yeah, do you... and he was. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to ask Bridget if she is on the same page with these guys or no. On which part? <laughs> <laughs> well said. I mean, I've I've been chiming in. <laughs> yeah, she, she popcorn flick is a good way to think about it. Yeah. Alan Hughes says School Island was the peak of the current monster series. That's what my wife says, too. I I sort of agree with that, yeah. What about the first legendary flick? What do you guys feel about that? A lot of people complain, not a lot of Godzilla in it. Which one are we talking about? The, the first 2014, yeah. Yeah, 2014 Godzilla. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> those, those, those all run together for me. <laughs> Because it seems like they went, they started serious, and each movie it's a little sillier. Or actually, it went from serious yeah. to annoying to sillier yeah. and annoying. The to, thing is, okay. in the first one, uh, the, they had some gravitas, but it was not particularly well done. It got very tedious. Yeah. Sure. Didn't help that most of the leads were just, they played flat. You know, Aaron Taylor Johnson wasn't exactly a acting powerhouse in that movie. It's just kind of like, I'm here. I need to go to the next scene. And Brian Krantz is in it, and then he's gone. Yep. So, uh, are we done with this? We're never you want to be done with it, Mike? We'll be, okay. We'll be revisiting this ad nauseum. Okay. Well, there's a couple new Batman comics. Here's a headline from SuperheroHype.com. Batman goes full cosmic horror in DC's new City of Madness series. The Dark Knight is about to find himself stuck in a living, cosmic, horror-fueled nightmare in a new Black Label Prestige series from DC. Um, I've read it. It's actually pretty good. Buried deep beneath Gotham City, there exists another Gotham. This Gotham below is a living nightmare populated by twisted Mirrors of our Gotham's denizens. So, there you go. I did not know that was Black Label. I thought that was part of the yeah the regular series. I don't I don't think it's considered canon if even DC knows what's canon anymore. I sure don't. They've rebooted like ten That's times true. in the last eight years or something like that. Yeah, well, I'm just like I don't even care is... anymore. I just read a story. I'm like, that's a great story. I don't care. Is it canon? Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. Black Label series from the ones I've read, they've been they've been very good. Like the Aquaman yeah. one, Andromeda was was that was okay. It wasn't like super fantastic, but I mean, you know, I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I saw it. I, mean, I don't think I read it. Um, it reminded me of the plot of Sphere. By Michael Crichton. Hmm. Okay. I was hoping it would go in a different direction, but it was okay for what I got, I guess. So that's the Cosmic Horror one. And then I just started reading. Well, you know, Batman uh, first appeared in Detective Comics. I think it was number 27 in 1939. A few months after Superman, after Action Comics number one, I think. And... Um, you know those those are interesting to read, and uh, they just have started a new series called Batman First Night, and it's 
that same look of that Batman and is set in 1939. You can't see that. In 1939. It's it's really cool so far. And, you know, World War Two is coming and so on and so forth. But, you know, what, what I think one of the writers, the writer said was that today Batman has just got so much technology that he's almost unstoppable. And he knows all how to use all the technology and so on and so forth. Uh, this one's kind of putting them back to the basics, you know. So it's really good read so far. So if you're a Batman fan, check it out. And if you're a Cosmic Horror and Batman fan, check out Batman City of, of Madness. So uh, Mark says that I agree with Jeff Loeb. We don't need continuity anymore. Comic stories should exist on their own and use previous horror canon however they want. You know what? I don't disagree with that at all. I'm fine with good stories. Yeah. So this is, just give me good stories. You know, and let every story be true in some re reality. That's fine. You know. So, uh, yeah. I'm rereading and re-listening to Nocturnes by John Connolly. And uh, here's a copy that I don't, I try not to touch too much. And it's a, it's a collection. And he's, he's the guy who wrote the Charlie Parker series that I've talked about, which is a detective series, mm -hmm. but sort of there, there is supernatural in it, but it's very well done. It's not an urban fantasy series by any means. It's a very realistic noir series, but with some, you know, supernatural thrown in. And uh, the supernatural is very atmospheric and very uh, moody and and very, uh, it, and some sometimes, you know, you don't really know, you know, it's ambiguous. Is it supernatural or not? Sometimes, which I like a lot. Any, but anyway, Nocturnes, so he, he's very familiar with horror, and writing horror, and this is a horror collection. If you've seen the movie The New Daughter, which I think is pretty Lovecraftian and very good movie with Kevin Costner, um, that's where this, that's where the movie came from, one of these short stories. But it's yeah. just, a, if, you've, if you've not read it and you like horror, which I assume you do if you're watching us, excuse me, um, you should pick it up. You know, the audio book or the Kindle edition or whatever. So, have, have, have you guys ever read this? No. Can't say that I have. No. I did just read uh, Phil Fricasse's Poison the Valley. That was excellent. Okay. Have you guys read it? I have not yet. It's on, a, my, it's on my huge TBR. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Mike? Yeah, spoiler free. It's uh, set in eighteen ninety eight at a, I guess you call, it, I guess it's an orphanage called Saint Vincent's. And there's four priests and all these orphans. And one night, a stranger and a bunch of people show up at the front door, and they bring in the stranger. And I'm trying to be like spoiler free here. Basically, something happens that sets off a chain of events. It's very. Uh, it's religious horror. To put it in that vein. And it re it's just, I finished it in like two days. Really? Yeah. From what I just, you know like, about you know, me, do you think I would enjoy reading it? Yeah, it's 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 a solid story. I mean, Phillips, you know. I have no doubt I've it's a solid it. story. Phil, yeah, Phillips is a great writer. I'm just saying, me personally, do you think I should read it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I think you'd enjoy it. All right. Yeah, I would definitely, I would, yeah, I recommend that. I I also read some kids' book called uh, what the hell is it? God's Moab. Uh, Mark Graney? is that it? Never heard. Uh, of it. I've I've heard it's of got that a future story somewhere. I think yeah. that kid's got a future. I really enjoyed that, Mark. That was well, a good you. one. Yeah, thank I mean, you. I that enjoyed was, all your stories, but I appreciate that. That's the uh, one and only uh, self-published uh, novella. 
ever done. Oh yeah. If yeah. if you really Mike, uh you should if you want to understand it a little better, you should next read uh Baylock. I have that. It's on sitting on the shelf. Basically that it's like the 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 two novels have a tie together. I don't want to ruin anything. Well, there's a certain character. I mean, I haven't read that yet. I have it from if, strangely enough, I've had it for a while, just haven't gotten to it. But I'm like, wait a minute, why does this name sound familiar? And I just kind of like craned over at the shelf. I'm like, that I guess character you know, has all... showed up in more than one of my uh, various yeah. tales, but Balak, which was my very first novel, so uh, I'm going to apologize in advance if you try to read that fucker. Uh, <laughs> if you try to read that fucker, <laughs> it, it might be one of the ones I bring up for you to sign, man. Um. Yeah, so I, I just finished that. Like, I actually finished that right before I started this one, uh, or for Kasi's book. And yeah, great as always. You have so. a big head, and that's because I just didn't went full screen. It has nothing to do with who that. has a big head, me? You now you do. You didn't mm. before. I don't like the <laughs> size counts. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna have to live with not seeing everybody at once because this looks better on full screen. Yeah. Like I said, I'm have working out the bugs. Have you guys seen the movie? Hey, just, hey, hang on one whatever. second. I just want to make sure people yeah, sure. heard the title. The Gods of Moab by Stephen Mark. Ray Gods Ray. of Moab. Right. Yep. All right. So I'm sorry. What? I was going to say, I finally got to see uh, Out of Darkness. The movie set oh, 45,000 years ago. Yeah. Okay. As what it, I know you've. It's, you know what? It sucks. It's the setup. I really liked, I didn't like obsess about, they have close cropped hair and their clothes look pretty good for 45,000 years ago. And I liked where they were going with it. And then there's a certain part of the movie. Are we doing spoilers for this? I don't know what to say. Not probably say. not. Cause this is, I won't do people. spoilers. Yeah. And I thought they were going in a certain direction with it. And then you get to a certain part and the story changes and you find out the big reveal. And I'm like, for fuck me no and it kind of, it, it really just killed it for me because this is like the third movie I'm in a glad row you I, agree. yeah i'm like really that's where you went with this is just it they could have done so much what were you saying about the third movie in a row it's the third movie in the row where i i really like the setup we kind of touched on this last week i'm like oh this is great and then at a certain part there's a reveal and i'm like and it just killed the movie for me. It lets out all the air. Out. And it's okay to repeat things like that because people don't really listen to the show anyway. They forget what we say. Yeah, I mean, look, my... <laughs> I'm kidding. It took I, a say, second for me. I, I, I disagreed with you because I actually thought Lovely, Dark, and Deep was... I didn't have any heartburn with how well they, where they went with it. Yeah. It's oh, like, look, it's it's did, my opinion. Do you have, have you seen Out of Darkness? That's not absolute. Yeah? you seen Out of Darkness yet? Matthew. No, Out of Darkness is on my list to see as possible Lovecraft easing show, but now the way that you're talking about it makes me wonder. I I uh, wanted to like it. I mean too. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mean, care about fine. their like, haircuts. I don't care about all that crap. I cared about the story and it didn't live up to what me my yeah. and it is my opinion only and and Mike's but Yeah. I got a question for you. Like up until ten. that part of it where you like Invested in it? Were you enjoying it? No. I All can't right. even remember that, huh? much of it now. And that's <laughs> they, not like they, me. They might... I mean, I do have memory yeah. issues sometimes, but usually not with movies or books. Yeah. Unless I read the well, book do... 20 years ago and then, yeah. Yeah. Aren't we do... Didn't you mention we're... we might do like an episode where we do spoilers galore on these movies? Yeah, absolutely. Just, just remind yeah. me. I can't really take notes right now because i'd love to hear what matt liked about lovely dark and deep or what how god uh lovely deep and dark help me out here lovely dark it, it, twist it, it, it line. Was, from I, a, a, Mike, a, I didn't think it was a great Robert movie Frost. yeah I, I just enjoyed it, it, it it's oh. like it's, it's a watchable movie you know that i would frame and say like it, it's it's worth taking a look at it's, it's yeah like the new godzilla movie. movie exactly i hear you matt well, I'm just saying, like, when we get the talks <laughs> with spoilers, I'd love to have that discussion. Okay, so we're going to compare notes. spoilers I, for 
the seventh seal, the cook, the thief, his wife, and her lover, and a razor head too. At night with Andre, or what was the one you? My loved dinner so much? with Andre. Yeah, uh, the, the that's, a, that's a is, winner. Your whole night is spoiled if you watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, that one was a. Uh, I did take a note. We're we're gonna start a movie spoilers series. How's that sound, Mike? That sounds great. Do you like that? Is yeah, because when we talk right about movies. Uh, it hits me in the feels, yep. as the kids used to say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would love to talk spoilers. All right, we'll we'll start a movie spoilers series. Um, yeah. Uh, listen, real quick, for the viewers and listeners, I'm really trying to build up the podcast, and I know I really have a, we really have a very loyal cult following, and I sure as hell appreciate that. It's far more than I thought I would ever get. But I'm trying to pay bills and, and the more people watch on YouTube, I get a tiny and I mean tiny check from YouTube every month. But it basically it amounts to the more views on YouTube, the larger that tiny check will get. Um so you know um if you comment below that helps a lot. I really appreciate the live side comments. You know, you can comment later below. If you click like, that helps a lot. And uh, uh, as far as that goes, and tell your friends, you know, social media, tell all your friends if you really like it, if you really like the podcast and all the recommendations and our opinions on horror, whether you agree with them or not. And then the other thing is the Patreon. Um, really loyal cult following there, too that I appreciate, but I could really use more patrons and it starts at $5 a month. So it's, it's pretty cheap and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you try to unsubscribe at any point in the future, I can promise you this. If you email me at lovecrafteasy and at gmail.com, then I will figure it out and make sure you're unsubscribed. So just Google Lovecraft easy and Patreon and you'll, you'll find it. So, that's enough about that, but um, a movie spoiler series, Mike, sounds really great. That sounds fun. Yeah, because I, that's one of the things I'd love to discuss. Because we, yeah, you know, it's like I want to talk about the movie, mm-hmm. then I'm gonna pump the brakes. I'm like, I'm gonna give it away and screw it up for somebody. Right, pump those brakes. With it, pump, the, holster that sidearm, Mister. Stop right there. Yeah, there you go. You know what? This is just out of the blue, but yeah. You know, and like cop shows or all kinds of shows where they're like, they're they're they think that somebody might be a suspect, and they they pull up his records and everything. He's uh, he's, he's never broken the law or anything. He's got a clean record, and it always ends with these words: "Exactly, not so much as a traffic ticket." And I'm like, "Come on, guys! It's only been used a thousand times." It's bugging me, so I wanted to tell everyone else so they could it could bug them too. So listen for that, DeBronzo, in the next cop. I will next time I'm I'm watching reruns of T.J. Hooker. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put it under the microscope. Right. Reruns of See Captain there. Kirk, seventies cop, and Easy. Romano. Yeah, okay, Don't so wait, wait, Romano. wait, Mike DeBronzo, do you cosplay when you're watching T.J. Hooker? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> if you're not, you're not doing it right. I don't think anyone but you is doing it right then. <laughs> yeah, I love I love Shatner's pause acting. You know, he does that thing where he just stops. Yeah, I like it too. Starts. Looks like he's trying to help <laughs> people. Mike talking. just wants to hang out with Heather Locklear. Was that it? She was in that, that show, wasn't either. wasn't she in that show? I think so. I was trying to remember. She was also was... in uh, Boston Legal for a few episodes, mm-hmm. which I th- which uh, Shatner was in. I always got her Funny confused show. with Heather Thomas from Fall Guy. But he, he, uh, Bridget was trying to say something. What were you trying oh, to say, Bridget? Sorry, go. Oh, it keeps glitching. Sorry. Go for um, Bridget. No, I was, saying, I was going to say the time to cosplay would be when you're watching Chips. So you can wear those really <laughs> awesome tall socks with the stripes and shorts oh, yeah. and pretend and to the, play basketball. And the them. Biden <laughs> aviator glasses, Bridget. Yes. I and have you can aviator see the glasses. <laughs> No Rockford files. <sighs> you're, you're so hard to please. You know that? Wow. Yeah. Goodness. 
Yeah. All right. Have you seen Boston Legal? Me personally? Anyone. anyone. Who are you asking? But it's especially DeBronzo because he likes the Shatner pause acting. So, no, no. It's funny. It's what was uh, the movie James... of uh, Calista Flockhart was in the show. What was she back oh, in the yeah. Ally McBeal? Ally McBeal. Was it? Ally yeah, McBeal. Same guy out? that created Boston Legal did Ally McBeal. Yeah. So I think Boston Legal came out after Ally McBeal, mm-hmm. and I had been, I had been done in by that show. Uh, so I didn't watch. In Boston what Legal. way? You were sad that it. That it ended. No, I just Did you get emotional. The, I got fed up with its stupidity. Did you cry, Matt? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay if you did. This is a safe room. This is a safe place. <laughs> you know, just feel free. I've seen not... Boston Legal on reruns, and some of those episodes are really funny, and some of them do not hold up. No, they do not. It's a bit sexist, and by a bit, I mean a lot. And that was only mid aughts you know. So I don't know if I should be recommending that or not, but, you know, that is very true. And I'm not one who looks for, you know, negatives everywhere, but I always thought that How I Met Your Mother got a bit sexist at times. But, all right, you guys feel the same way I can see, so we'll move on. Uh, Nocturnes, oh. Never watched that show either. What? Yeah. I, are you, you can't guys? can't comment on that. Which show? Hi, I met your mother. Oh. What are you guys, and by you guys, I mean everybody watching, and you guys right here, doing tomorrow? I'll bet I know. Oh, the eclipse? Yeah. Um, Okay, so in Carroll, Iowa, the coverage is about 75 78% peak at 2 p.m., and we're due for clouds. So I may go out and try and turn into a triffid or something, but... Now, my kids are in Madison, and they're going to get like 92 or 3% coverage. If I was back home in Peoria, I would drive, frankly, three hours down to Carbondale and uh, see the full thing. Or you could drive 13 hours down to my house and see the whole thing. Well, let right. me know if you turn into a Triffid. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure none of us are going to be raptured like I've been hearing talk. Uh, but, you know, there's yeah. supposed to be like rapture tomorrow. So, yeah. Is it I've wrong if I say crazy. there's a lot of stupid people out there? You know, what I wrong? recommend is uh, it was apparently May 21st, 2011, there was supposed to be the rapture. So I went out. I don't know if you can see that at all. I went out and put some nope. clothes, you know, out in front of the road. <laughs> <laughs> amazing that's awesome you that gotta send me that <laughs> i'll do that with with a blurb just what it's saying what it is so i can share it with a million people <laughs> that's brilliant i'll i'll shoot that to you for, oh for those listening it, it was an empty pair of clothes yeah <laughs> <laughs> and laid out you know like uh, they just dropped where the dude stood Oh, so, and so, I, uh, I did two or three sets of those on my road. Um, so, but they, I could not see them from my window, so I have no idea what uh, reactions there might have been, if any. So, so Mark, are you going to get a full eclipse? I don't think it's going to be full, but it's supposed to be close. You know, something like eighty percent, eighty-five percent. Well, let me tell you something, Mister Carpenter. I'm right in the middle of totality. They expect a hundred thousand people. To be in Waxahachie tomorrow. Holy cow. Good grief. On top of the current population. Do you have, do you have uh, eclipse glasses, Mike? I do. We do. That's cool. Um, now, here's the thing you might be jealous of. I just have to walk into my backyard and see the eclipse tomorrow. Here's the thing you might not be jealous of tomorrow. It's sunny as hell today, and it's supposed to thunderstorm tomorrow and be cloudy. That's what happened to us the last eclipse event that there was supposed to be. It just, you know, I've been, I love astronomy. I've been, it's just been one of my interests my entire life. And, oh, it just just burns me. I really hope it's not cloudy tomorrow. Oh, son of a gun. I just looked at my forecast and it is supposed to be cloudy all day. It's sunny here. 
she have you guys ever been through a totality or mark you you were yeah uh back in 2011 20 yeah no i wasn't that far that not for the eclipse um the eclipse was just a few years ago that was total here well there's and, uh, you know there's I got a, a good look it, at that some weird things can happen i don't mean supernatural but like it gets a little it can get a little colder depending on where you're at uh -huh. it did and all the birds it, there's this silence they just shut up you know, I'll be interested to see if that happens here tomorrow. Well, if I wasn't teaching during it tomorrow, I'd be watching Lady Hawk, but I might watch it <laughs> tomorrow you? night in awesome. memoriam. I forgot about Lady Hawk. That is such a great movie. It's amazing. And the music is cheesy as all hell, which <laughs> makes it even greater. Is that one with Rutger Hauer? Yep. I think yeah, I've seen, and Matthew, I saw that a long Matthew time Broderick ago. Matthew Broderick and Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, uh, classic. Yeah, Matthew Broderick may be the weak part of that trio. Oh, for sure, but... It's he very, wasn't as good as he possible. was in the, in the, in the Godzilla I mean, movie. it's like they're wearing sweater <laughs> mail. How authentic do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so... Yeah, I've seen that But it's an times. awesome story where love prevails. That's right. <laughs> yeah what you don't like it the bronzo why, why do you hate america <laughs> well what lady hawk yeah no i i I'm really like that movie kidding. oh no damn it you started this i'm gonna finish it <laughs> but like matthew broderick was just matthew broderick at the time he no, was i totally movie. agree yeah 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 but it's like, ooh, let's see. This worked having him talk to the camera. Let's do it again, but in medieval times. Yeah, right. it's kind of like my argument with uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula. It's just like they had Keanu in there as Harker. And they said, like, well, yeah, he wasn't right for the role, but he was hot at the time. <laughs> like, yeah. See, I don't that's... mind him being kind of a bumbling um, Jonathan Harker. Like, I don't know. I'll bet. Not. I love it when he says, "I know where the bastard lives." His accent's <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, uh, you know, I just my favorite part of Lady Hawk is when Matthew Broderick looks at the camera and says, "Life moves by pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around, you might miss it." That dead silence. Nobody <laughs> knows what movie I'm talking about. I know exactly yeah, what you're talking about. I just wasn't going to give it to you. I also have a gummy bear in my pocket. It's still warm. Is it an evil gummy bear or a regular gummy bear? That's also a quote from the movie. It is? I can't. I don't remember it. I, I love when <laughs> Broderick's in, they're in the restaurant with the waiter. That was classic. All right, I'll move on. Uh, Jeff Thomas says on social media, Je writer Jeffrey Thomas, I'm not trying to make anyone feel guilty, obligated, or pressured about buying and reviewing my new hor horror story collection, Gods of a Nameless Country, and se a science fiction horror novel, The Exploded Soul, but Baby needs to a new pair of shoes. Uh, <laughs> listen, I hope anyone watching or listening to this is writing that those down. And if you haven't read Jeffrey Thomas, you really should. Creator of Punk Town uh, and his new two two new books. So we're it's a great year. Gods of a Nameless Country, and the other one is The Exploded Soul. So he also had another one a few months ago, but it's it's already out of print. The Spirit of Place. Okay. It's been about a month uh, since he was on here, I think, and he talked a bit yeah, about that. Fascinating patrons. stuff to hear him, um, you know, give the background of like gods of a nameless country. So I went right out, picked it up, and it is next in my reading queue. Is uh, Should be able to start that this week, I suspect. Yeah, that's an excellent example of the extra Patreon podcasts you get at the five dollar level and up if you're not if you're a patron. And that yeah, about a month ago, like Mark said. So so yeah, pick those up. Um what else do we got here? 
You guys got anything else you want to uh, talk about or review? You know, recommend? Um, well, just a couple things about uh, Lovecraftian art. Um, I think it's is it uh, Francois Baranger? His uh, Shadow over Innsmouth is his next great work. He's the one who's been doing those spectacular paintings, and then these oversized books get released, like he did uh, the Mountains of Madness. Um, he did the Call of Cthulhu, and his paintings are just gorgeous. Uh, well, he's working on the Shadow over Innsmouth. I think the work is done, and it's getting it ready for publication. Recently, it was said that Sandy Peterson is writing the introduction. Yep. So their track record is they first release the version in French, and then the English language version follows if you can be patient enough to wait for it. Um, there's actually quite a lot of good Lovecraftian stuff coming out of France at the moment. Um, do you all know, uh, like, um, in 2014 to 16, uh, PS Publishing did their pulp series where they did almost all of Lovecraft's works published in these little books with essays and stuff, heavily illustrated with color art by Peter von Schale. So that was an English language illustrated Lovecraft. Oh, while I like it, I think you should look at the art first before buying because it's a, an, I, I don't think it's like a chip shot to like uh, Peter von Schale's art compared to other people. But there's this guy named Armel Galme, Gal Gal yeah, Armel Galme. He's an artist from France. He uh, graduated whatever Art Academy did from like 2001 or two. They've been doing something called Carnet de Lovecraft, which is Lovecraft notebooks. And he's done five so far, which they, these are not English. They're a French translation of the Lovecraft story, but they're chock full of really great art. Like, and it's different kinds, sketches and paintings and all kinds of things. Um, the most recent one, it was from like 2018 to 2022, they released five. So the most recent one was the festival. But I just found out uh, he's taking it to another company and they're going to be publishing an omnibus with uh, an additional one, Pickman's model. And he's redoing some of his art, doing some touch-ups, picking different pictures. So it's kind of like you sort of, you have to pick it up. Now, you don't have to be able to read French to enjoy it because you can always pick up like your copy of the festival and read it while looking at the pictures. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I just like to say there's some really interesting um, French art out there. Uh, there's actually a couple others that I'm going to feature in my book a day over the next couple of days. Um Someone did a, uh, you know, Lovecraft did travelogues of the places that he went. They were very popular at the time, and he went to Quebec. And uh, so they used his trip to Quebec as a springboard for creating a very gorgeous graphic novel. I can't read a damn word of it, but it's just beautiful to look through. But also um, what started it, I heard, Matt, was that someone said, you know, paint me or draw me like one of your, your French Lovecraftian monsters. Not going to give me that in one either, DeBronzo? No. Okay. Please continue. Um, <laughs> well, um, trying to remember room, what the heck it, it's called. They were selling them for a while on the H.P. Lovecraft Historic Soul Society, but there's this book called La Cite Oblique, L-A-C-I-T-E Oblique, O-B-L-I-Q-U-E. And I got to tell you, if you can look at it online, it's just utterly gorgeous art um, that they've they've created from this actual travelogue, which they've turned into a graphic novel. I, I'm hoping it has a nice story, <laughs> but I don't know. Well, I'm going to check it out. What Online, what did you say the title was again? La Cite Oblique. Okay. And uh, then there's another one, another graphic novel in French called Le Dernier Jour de Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Uh, and I think uh, is Dernier Jour, Jour like the next day? Um, I don't know. Again, if you look it up. Dernier the Jour, art, yeah. yeah. Right. The, the art is truly spectacular uh i can't 
say that I can understand the story at all. Again, it's in French, but I got it just to admire the art. So I think that's just, I wanted to say that like right now, there's a lot of exciting art coming out of France for Lovecraft fans. There's actually, at the end of the year, there's a go. Tanabe is doing the Call of Cthulhu. So that's coming out too. Ah. That's a for pre-order. Now that I had, I've that had that for a couple of years now in Japanese. Oh, have you? Yeah, except I, like, I read less Japanese than I read French. <laughs> like, but what I'll do is like, if I want to read the story, I can pull out the different art yeah. books and go back and forth. And I just think it's such a nice experience to read this classic story and to see what artists have created from it. I have a question because you have you said you have the Japanese version. You're not a, adverse to buying foreign language editions, right? Do you know if like Tanabe has done any more Lovecraft stories? Okay, so the first one that I know of um, was uh, uh, the Outsider, and that was published in a, um, a manga edition that had other stories in it that weren't. Lovecraft okay so uh in terms of I guess what you're asking is are there any other ones that you're unaware of yes uh because you're you know about like uh for example the color out of space that uh is actually really really well drawn um and he's got the shadow out of time have you seen that one no, are these in English editions or are they? Uh, no, I got well. The the color out of space might be, but see, what happens is, I just picked them up when I saw them. So I have some in French. I might have one in German, because I didn't really care so much about the English language because I have so many damned versions of the story. But uh, he he certainly has uh, done quite well uh, with all of his adaptations. So if you think like you start with The Outsider, which is a short story, he's not really done any other of the brief short stories uh, other than that. But then uh, he did The Hound. OK, yeah. and um, in The Hound, uh, let's see what else is in that. Uh, the Hound Temple. Temple and the Nameless City. Yes. Okay? And, and his art is just for all of those stories. It's spectacular. Then he came out with at The Mountains of Madness. Yep. Uh, um, the color out of space, which the color I didn't know he did color out of space, but the haunter. Of the, have, you, have you seen the haunter of the dark? No. Oh, it's it's I, again the the pictures of the church are just spectacular. The uh, pictures of the library in uh, the shadow out of time are really gorgeous, and uh, then there's um, the call of Cthulhu. I, I'd really so be the interested. Over in the, Smith is the one that's the newest. I'd really be interested. Yeah, there's in actually, the of the Dark and um, Shadow yeah. Out of Time. I, those are my two favorite stories by Lovecraft. Well, Shadow over Innsmouth. I haven't read that yet. His, obviously, but right. I was just flipping through it while we were talking. There's color plates in there too. Is which are look really good because I one of the things I love about his art is it's black and white. It's ink. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's very strong just by itself. But well, if you look so. in the shadow out of time, some of those plates are color as well. There's a really gorgeous. Oh, really? He has it's a long hallway in the library, and one of those um, great race uh, is uh, walking. It's just it's it's gorgeous. Oh, wow. The guy really is good at what he does. Yeah, that's cool. Mark, uh, you have an art rec too. Yeah. Um... I don't know if any of you are friends with him on uh, Facebook, J.B. Lee. Um, I don't know that he's had work published particularly. He he just constantly is putting up these illustrations on social media of um, Lovecraftian critters and scenes. and things. He does them a lot of times in black and white. Oftentimes he calls them in the style of say the outer limits or a thriller. He he was a real fan cool. of the old fifties and sixties horror science fiction shows. And I'm just more and more impressed by the uh 
the atmosphere and the the, the renderings. He did one of uh, Haunter of the Dark a while back that, honest to God, looks like it would have been a scene out of the Outer Limits of looking through the window and the three-lobed burning eye. It was gorgeous. Now, <clears throat> I... Uh, for a while there, I was doing author interviews on my blog called The Graveside Chat, which goes back to old Death Realm days. And I haven't done one in a while, but uh, the last few things that JB has posted were so cool. I asked him, would he be interested in doing a Graveside Chat on my blog and post some of his images? Because I'd really like to see these things get some attention. So he agreed to do that, and I sent him an interview today. Uh, so hopefully, uh, coming up pretty soon, I'll, I'll send y'all links, stuff like that, but I'm just really impressed with, uh, the body of work he's put together. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say his style is anything like, uh, Lee Brown Coy, but there's something about it. The, 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 the way he does the, the renderings and the scenes and all, he, he's just built up a really cool catalog of stuff. Yeah, I just sent him a friend request, but I can see a lot of his illustrations anyway. And here, here's an album. Um, my illustrations of various sci-fi, horror, and fantasy stories on J.B. Lee's Facebook. This, You're right, Mark. This is really cool. So, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I don't think he's published. Well, the way I got uh, acquainted with him was he did a um, really nice rendering uh, from my story called um, Stalker of the Wild Wind uh, in uh, Ithaca Anthology, one of the Chaosium Ithaca Anthology. And uh, he sent me a copy of that and I, just out of the blue. And I'm like, well, that was pretty dang cool. So I've been keeping up with his work ever since. Yeah. Um, I'm... Uh, those of you who are art fans, if you want to go to Necronomicon this summer, they do have a major weird fiction art exhibit that accompanies the convention. Uh, you get a you get admission free if you've got your uh, attendee badge at the uh, uh, convention, and then you just kind of walk up to the art show wherever they're happy to have it. Yeah, and in fact, when you get the program. One of the nice things about the program, besides just telling you what's going on, is it always includes a little gallery of the featured artist, which yeah. makes a very, I think, gorgeous little collector's piece. Uh, Adam Adam Neville has a book that just came out that I wanted to, I haven't read it yet, but I wanted to give a shout out to because he's a really great writer. It's called All the Fiends of Hell, and it's available on Kindle Unlimited, as a matter of fact. And yeah. Uh, available on audiobook uh, as well on Audible. Have you read I this? I picked up Mike? the kid. I haven't read it yet, but I picked it up on Kindle the other day when I saw it because it just came out right Tuesday. Yeah, I think. yeah, just this past week. Yeah, I believe. so uh, here's the Amazon synopsis: The Red Knight of Hell. Excuse me, the Red Knight of Bells heralds global catastrophe. Must be an eclipse happening. Annihilation on a biblical scale. Seeing the morning is no blessing. The handful of scattered survivors are confronted by blood-red skies and an infestation of predatory horrors that never originated on Earth, an occupying force intent on erasing the remnants of animal life from the planet. Um, and then there's a few more paragraphs, but it just looks really good. Yeah. If you like apocalyptic horror. Mostly he writes uh, folk horror, so-called folk horror. Right. Um, I, I Did I read some kind of thing in the blurb that sort of would tie into that thematically? Like uh, we all talked about uh, the ritual, but he had another book called The Reddening, which leaned really hard yeah. into British folklore. Yeah. Uh, cunning, f I haven't, I started uh the reddening but i haven't finished it yet but cunning folks i think is another one he had come out that's really supposed to be folklore i think mother horror recommended it as such so so um 
this is going to come too late for some people, but uh, Alan Hughes posted this for me on the big Facebook page. Steam is having their Lovecraftian Days game sale from April 4th through 8th. Now, this is April 7th, so you've got till the end of Monday on the 8th to take advantage of this. So, you know, if you like Lovecraftian games, definitely that's the way to go. Alan Hughes told me. Alan Smulling told me. Okay. Another Alan told me, and Jamie told me. So, thanks, everybody. So, uh... Oh, the creepy photos that Mark was talking about. Uh, fo- I got a new um, Instagram, and I, I just I'm deleting my t- uh, Twitter account, but I just think Instagram. I like Facebook a lot because it's where everybody is in this community. But Instagram is just to me a neat little app. You can post your photos and no drama, anything yeah. like that. Of course, the minute I say this, someone will say there's plenty of drama on inst- Instagram, but doesn't seem like it. But anyway, uh, follow me. Mike Davis Photos 13 is what it is. I don't have many many followers on that yet, but I plan to keep walking around at night, Mark, and giving you guys more creepy photos. Please do. I'm loving those. Yeah, thanks. Christina follows you. Christina does? Yeah. Uh, smart, yeah. Very smart lady. You yeah, there you go. There. <laughs> yeah uh that for example the le- the latest one that's a real creepy area i was sort of behind the neighborhood if that makes sense um walk down a side street that nobody walks down or drives down unless you live you're one of the three people that live on it and then it goes mm-hmm. right to the railroad um and there's that creepy house on the left, the way I was facing, and an abandoned um, you know, stop, railway stop on the on the right. Also creepy looking. I should have. I'll go back there. I should have taken a picture of that. So, so guess what we're doing on Tuesday? We're recording an episode of about the fog. That's right. It's just an excuse to talk about Tom Atkins. Let's get that out there. You know, I'm not going to judge you for that. He's really, he's a very <laughs> cool writer. I mean, a very cool uh, actor. You know? Yes, he is. Uh, they Somebody called him Burt Reynolds light one time. I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, they couldn't afford his mustache for The Fog, but it still turned out to be a really fine movie, horror film. You yeah. Know? I. You know what? I went back and I'm like, shit, he doesn't have that mustache in his movie. Mm-mm. It's it's weird. I never put that together. Yeah, it's just just a question of where do you put your money in the movie, and you know they put it on Jamie Lee Curtis. So anyway, uh, someone once said I can't remember when they after they watched The Fog. Wow, it feels like Dennis Etchison wrote this, and they had no idea that Dennis Etchison wrote the novelization, which. You know, a lot of novelizations are like, okay, this is some second-rate writer, you know, looks at the script and, you know, creates a novelization of the of the script. That that's not this. This Dennis Etchison is was amazing. So, and Matt Carden, I believe, is going to join us. Oh, nice. Oh, I I like Matt. He's yeah. got some good stuff. It was just serendipitous i guess uh because i saw he posted about the fog i think yesterday Mm -hmm. and i told him i said wow this is weird we're about to talk about the fog you know we're going to record it for the patreons so that should be up soon Uh, i also have a a poster of the fog in my office i'm going to do a office tour soon but i have a a how'd you get that I stole it from some guy. Yeah. Some idiot. Some idiot probably sent it to you in the mail, right? Yeah, thank you for doing that. You have a poster of the fog too, right? Yeah, I actually had that poster. I was just oh, like Oh, that one? I Okay. Well, that was nice of you. Yeah, there you I go. thought you had two for some reason. No, so... I actually I actually bought another one just for you. 
that's really nice. I owe, and I owe Matt a lunch for uh, the books he sent me. He keeps sending me like Chateaubriand and all the suggestions for Providence. I keep sending him like menus for the bars. Yeah, I, I don't care what they're Matt four star said. bars though. Yeah, I don't care what Matt says about you. You're you're a good guy. Trinity all the way. <laughs> okay, so Mike, I just sent you a little playset that you need. It's on the uh, um, Easyners chat group. Okay. <laughs> what is it? It's a Stevie Wayne KAB radio DJ playset from the hit film, hit film, <laughs> The Fog. I wish I could show it. This looks, this is great. It looks like some. It's it's got a little record player on it and everything and pictures of Stevie Wayne. So KAB. Somebody's got to do that at the beginning of that that show. They got to do it with Stevie Wayne. Yeah, she's going to... Yeah. One of us has to do that. I got to head you? out, folks. But, Thanks, uh, Mark. Yep. We're wrapping hey, up. Hey, lot, and too. we'll see you soon. See you, buddy. Bye, Bye Mark. Take too. care, Mark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> funny part of the movie where she's... Like, I'll, right before Tom Atkins picks up Jamie Lee Curtis, he's driving his truck at night obviously and he's listening to her and she's like this is stevie wayne doing uh if you keep me on then i will i will do my best to turn you on as well and atkins just looks at the radio and goes okay <laughs> yeah it's so like manly okay whatever <laughs> i i can't wait to talk about this movie because he's like okay. he's my favorite part of that movie mine too <laughs> Nick Castle. Right. Um, right. You know what? Since we're talking art and we were talking aliens last week and you posed that question, I had something on my... I finally got my hands on. I thought it'd be really cool. If you were a fan of the Alien franchise, there's a little thing called Alien the Blueprints. Oh. And it is an oversized volume. And it literally is the blueprints of like the Nostromo. I don't know if you can see this because I can't see past this big book. Yeah, cool. But it goes, from, it goes from Alien all the way to Covenant. And it's wow. just... It's really cool. Like, If you ever wondered what the Sulaku, all that stuff on it... Oh, geez, I'm going to rip it. Um, Yeah, we'll stop that. But uh, I was paging through it the other day and I'm like, it's just really cool. Uh, So, if you see it and that's your... That's your thing you're into? I would recommend picking that up. That's it. I can't get over the Stevie Wayne KAB radio. <laughs> I think Bridget right. should do the intro. She's got the voice. She does have a good voice. Very good voice. She Nice. Thanks. <laughs> KAB. You're hired. <laughs> On it. <laughs> Everyone always told me that I had a face for radio, and I really appreciated the, that compliment. <laughs> I have a face for radio and a voice oh, really? for sin. So see, well, see if well, the, the great thing is, like, if you were on the radio, we could like change the channel. Well, I'll be on the radio, so to speak, Thursday nights, late night with Lovecraft Easing, eleven p.m. That's really Eastern. cool. Yeah, it's too too late for me to listen in, Mike. Yeah, that's why it's cool for you. <laughs> no, I just it's, I think it's a great idea. I just can't participate. And thanks. Yeah. Uh, listen, um, here's a couple of tips for the eclipse by a guy on looks like Twitter by the name of Ron Avitz, Zur. Okay. I'll just go through these rather quickly. Helpful tips for a safe eclipse viewing experience. Uh, this is a PSA. The more, you know, from Lovecraft easing, we, we just want to keep you informed. The people of Tennessee may have the best view but will also be the first to be sacrificed. Animals may behave strangely. If your dog speaks like a man, heed its dire warning. So there's, let me, excuse me, a few more. Do not trust the squirrel with the child's face. It speaks only lies. So, you know, tomorrow, not only do you need Oh, I'm, you're still spotlighted. Sorry about that. Tomorrow, not only do you need... 
not only do you need the proper glasses if you're in in or near totality you need to really remember these hints when your double arrives resist the inclination to fight it it may be stronger than you chances are it will disappear after the eclipse be careful that it doesn't switch places it will be a few decades before you get the chance to come back 2044 by the way if i'm not mistaken is the next one in america anyway if you stare into the void and it blinks first, you win, but the price is insanity. You like this one, Mike. Werewolves are not only impossible to kill during an eclipse, they become super werewolves. Whatever you do, don't buy any weird plants. We don't want to repeat of last time. <laughs> the moon serpent may try to eat you, let him. And last but not least, speaking of you know, a love story that, that, that ends with love winning out. If once upon a time you were falling in love, but now you're only falling apart, there's nothing you can do. This is a different type of eclipse. So. That was my favorite one. <laughs> the more you know. From Ron Avitzur on A-V-I-T-Z-U-R on, I think, I think Twitter. Someone sent me this screen grab. So, uh, yeah, the fog. Okay, we talked about that. Okay. Probably inflicted enough horror on the viewers for one day. What do you guys think? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a friend of Xander's. <laughs> Uh, I would say we, we've done enough damage. We'll uh, have more later. Remember, oh. movie night is Wednesday this week at it's 8 p.m. Enough. Central. I'll post a note. Okay. Uh, last but not least, Oreo is hanging in there. Oreo the cat. She's... Oh, sorry, Oreo. I put a book on the ottoman here. Jeez, that was a look she just gave me. Anyway, uh... Of all my cats, uh, if this is wrong to say, I don't want to be right. I love her the most, and she loves she follows me around like a little puppy. She's the only one allowed in the office, and I really, all all kidding aside, I, you know, I was talking about this with Laird about how much our animals mean to us, and and uh, you know, I don't want to lose her. We've spent like a thousand dollars of that I don't have already to try and keep her, and I. The main thing is, if she, no matter what we do, if she's in pain, it would be selfish to to keep her. But she's she's on she's now on steroids, gabapentin, and a diet of of she can't eat the hard food anymore. So she's on a diet of it's like a chicken. It's really cute. It's like a chicken noodle soup for cats, and she really loves it. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I I don't I don't know I don't. You know, I've had to do a GoFundMe before for another reason, and I just feel really silly doing another one, but I just, I don't want to lose her because of money, you know? So, I don't know. I'll think about it. But I know a lot of people, a lot of people asked about Oreo, and the short answer right right now is she's, she's doing okay as long as she's got the medicine. And, you know, she acts sick. I mean, I know cats sleep all the time, but she really has been you can tell the difference but she's not in pain and that's the main thing um and i hope i really hope that continues so yeah anyway anything else guys the fog on tuesday we'll record that probably be out for patreons a week or two later i've got to put out so, the trevor trevor henderson one first i interviewed him so you guys uh if you're do uh panelists if like you're doing something during the eclipse, uh, take a photo and let us see a picture of the shadows or whatever. Just share it onto the, uh, the chat group. I think yeah, that's a great do... idea. I'm going to take a picture of me doing absolutely nothing that has to do with the eclipse during the eclipse. <laughs> Maybe you could be watching TJ Hooker during the I, eclipse. Damn well, I will. I'll find it. Damn, damn straight. Yeah. Hooker always gets his man. Hit him, stop them to talk like. Thank <laughs> you.
I mean, what who what were they thinking when they chose his last name? I don't get it. You got to admit, all the last names, sti- it does stick in your yeah. You're right. I mean, yeah. And you know, it's, it's not as bad as the names for the Bond girls. So come on, Kissy Suzuki, Plenty O'Toole, <laughs> Tiffany Case, and the you know. We live in a world where William Shatner has sung on multiple occasions. So, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and the world is—I don't know if the world's a better place for it. It's certainly a more amusing place. Well, I—I I have heard that he actually <laughs> brings on an eclipse when he sings. So he hasn't, you know. I think he sang re- if, recently. Must have. If no, if no one knows that's listening or watching what we're talking about, go to YouTube. <laughs> well, you're on YouTube, but. <laughs> Look for William, William Shatner, Rocket Man. No, no. Lucy I'm a Rocket Man. Do Lucy, both. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Go crazy and do it, both. They're Go amazing. Nuts. He's smoking uh, too. The seventies, and I'm not Lucy in the Sky. On the river with tangerines and marmalade skies. Basically, Rocket Man. He's speaking. Is He's not singing. He's just speaking, smoking a fucking cigarette. I'm a, yeah, I mean, I'm a rocking man. Leonard, at least on Leonard Nimoy's singles, he sang. <sighs> Didn't the British have like this whole tradition of patter talking? In fact, almost all of Henry That's Higgins' all we do. Line in uh, all of Henry Higgins' lines in My Fair Lady aren't really singing. You know, it's like the, Anthony Daniels. When Star Wars was such a hit, put out a Christmas album. Look, here's the point. It doesn't matter. It, it was entertaining. It's still entertaining. If I need a great laugh, I go watch it. You know, and I'm not really making fun of Shatner in my mind, but it's just there's nobody like him. He's like a actor into himself and singer, I would guess. You could yeah. say it too. Okay. All you gotta do is go. What was it? Valley of the Spiders, Kingdom of the Spiders, and Devil's Reign. Man, <laughs> he's in both of those movies, and it's memorable. I think Kingdom of the Spiders. His name is Rack Handsome. You know, I'm <laughs> gonna say he is how much always more... work. He's always worked though. He's always brought yeah. to pay. Yeah, he's he's got to pay. He's got to pay those bills. I'm a rocket man. I can't do it. Uh, uh, Alan Generation. Hughes. Of... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Right. I can't. I can't. I really <laughs> hope this sticks in your mind while you're lonely in that hotel room by yourself and that you pull up the YouTube video, Matt. And Please. watch Rocket Man and listen to it once once again. I can't, man. This this will tie your day up. You, you know how I, it's like, I'll, it'll just make me all the more pitiful. Well, that's, that's <laughs> why I suggested it. All right, I do have to go. Yeah, me too. Uh, last but not least, DeBronzo, Alan Hughes says, and every episode, he's talking about TJ Hooker, and every episode yeah. ended with him jumping on a moving car's hood. Yes. <laughs> yes, Alan, that is... <laughs> he always the jump and the roll to the gun. Bridget, I want to get started on the, on the when you have time, on s- some more t-shirts and... Ooh, ah, look at this fine coffee cup. Designed by Trevor Henderson, no less. Uh, nice. Yeah, you can go. You can link is in the show notes. T public, but I'm working on getting on. You know, you know, people can just buy straight from YouTube. And everything I hear, that's what the professional podcasters do. They do shit like that. Can Can I say one more thing about Mr. Yeah. Hooker? Yeah, no, Matt, you can leave. You don't have to listen to him. Imagine if <laughs> Stevie Wayne. Was played by William Shatner in The Fog. What a different movie that was. Ooh. K. A. A B. B. <laughs> like, literally 30, 66% of the runtime would be him trying to get his lines out. It's awesome. If anyone uh-huh. is out there, my son is whatever she said. Hang on, bastards are trying to kill my son in The Fog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Double damn on you. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm done. <laughs> I can't talk. 
Um, anyway, as I was saying to Bridget, you know, for those who don't know, she's not only a talented musician, but also a talented artist and narrator. Mm. But I, I thought, here's our next T-shirt, because I want to start get going on this. Yeah. The next T-shirt says simply, and only people who listen to the podcast will get it, but it'll say, Rick is the goat. Yes. What do you think? <laughs> I like yeah. it. I approve. All right. Thank you. What do you think, Alan Hughes? Uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. Uh, we will. I'll see you Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern. Well, you'll see me, and you'll listen to me. I won't see you, but I'll see your live comments. And thanks for being here, guys. Hey, you uh-huh. know what? Don't ever get the imp- I'm t- to the listener. Don't ever get the impression that I don't like any of these panelists here. We just tease each other. I love I love these guys and gal. I thought he's. They're going to say I just really fucking hate them. Like, <laughs> not that yeah, I don't I like really you. Love, I just hate yeah. you. Yeah. And you. It was, really it was guys, subtext. Fuck Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> why did I, Mike? Why did you send me that? Because I was I've been harassing humble. you this episode so much. Why did you send me that envelope full of ticks with Rocky Mountain spotted fever? That's what I want to know. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate being here. Everybody watching, and we'll, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. There we go.